everyone and welcome back to the channel today we are checking out the fx 11 gh by fxt technology it is a rear view mirror dash camera with a wireless rear camera now it records 1080p resolution videos to a micro sd card with a built-in dvr now it comes in three separate units we have the rear view mirror monitor with the front view camera we have the rear view camera and the cigarette lighter power source with a built-in wireless receiver antenna unit so taking a closer look at the main rear view mirror front camera unit it has the bendable but semi-stiff rubber strap hooks to hook it to your existing rear view mirror so all you do is just use the provided rubber bands and wrap it around your existing rear view mirror. Now we have the front 1080p camera with a wide field of view of 130 degrees, which is nice and wide. And it also slides out to accommodate your existing rear view mirror. It has a 9.6 inch color touch screen display and on the bottom is the power push button on and off switch and we have some speaker grills now in the rear is the reset button kind of hidden back here and we have on the top the mini usb port for power we have the rear view camera receiver input port and we have the micro sd card slot for the built-in dvr and we also have a GPS port, but it has been blocked off. So there is no GPS connectability on this particular unit. Here is the wireless rear view camera unit. Now the wires that are on here are the power wires, which you will need to connect to a 12 to 18 volt power source, like the license plate light power source, and of course the ground wire. Now it comes on this metal bracket designed for the license plate. So you put this between the license plate and the car and screw on the license plate. Now the camera has a tilt capability of 90 degrees. So once you got it just right, go ahead and tighten up those screws on either side of the camera. So here we have the camera lens. Now this camera lens has a super wide field of view of 160 degrees. So objects are definitely closer than they appear in the display screen. Now, I want to strongly emphasize this. So because of the super wide field of view of this rear view camera angle, the blind spot that you normally experience, which is between when a car passes you by on either side of the lane next to you, and it disappears from your normal rear view mirror until it reappears on your side view mirror, especially on your right lane. Well, that is basically eliminated. As a matter of fact, the car will appear on your peripheral vision while that car is still visible on the rear view display screen.
Now here are some LED lights on the rear view camera unit, which I had it covered with a strip of electric tape. Now we have the power source indicator light, and we have a CDS sensor, which detects brightness and turns on these super bright LED lights when it goes dark at night. Now I am told by the manufacturer that there is no way to turn these LED lights on and off and they are facing the same direction as the camera which you want to face towards the oncoming car behind you and I'm not so sure if that is a good thing. Now, it may be a good thing for the camera to have a light source in the dark but while you are driving you don't want to be blinding the guy that is following behind you. Now I'm not sure that is a legal thing either so to solve this issue I just put some black electric tape right on top of it. You could connect the power source wires to the automobile's reverse light wires as the power source and that will power up the rear view camera unit in reverse only but you will not have video recordings any other time that you are driving except when you are in the reverse. So maybe they could fix that issue with an update or something in the future. So either allow a switch to turn the super bright LED lights on or off or have a third wire, a sensor wire just for the reverse light. So it comes on only in reverse, but the camera unit stays on and records all the time. And here is the cigarette lighter power source unit. Now plug it into the ignition powered cigarette lighter power source. So it powers on when the ignition is switched on and not all of the time. Now it has an antenna interface to receive the rear view camera video wirelessly. And this is the antenna that is provided. It is pretty small, but it does do the job. So you connect the mini USB connector to the main camera unit to give it power and connect the 2.5 millimeter plug to the auxiliary port. Now we have status LED lights right here. Red indicates no connection and green indicates connection. And on the side we have the reverse line code button. Now short press to show the reverse camera with a lane marker. Now in this mode, the display will show the entire field of view of the rear view camera to help facilitate backing up into a parking spot, for example. Now, long press to connect to the rear camera unit wirelessly if it is not already connected and the indicator is showing a red LED light. Now, it should already come pre-connected from the factory, but if for some reason they become disconnected, you can manually reconnect them and a green light will indicate a connection. And here we have a power button. Now you can turn the rear view camera on and off if you don't need it. Now, when you do turn it off, you are only turning off the receiver on this power unit and not the rear view camera unit itself. So everything will still work. And unfortunately, the LED lights, that super bright LED lights on the rear view camera unit stays on and does not turn off. So the installation is reasonably simple. Just plug in the mini USB and the rear camera connector. Wrap the provided rubber bands around your existing mirror. Position the rear view camera and give it power. And plug in the cigarette lighter power source. Now, once you start the car, provided you have installed a micro SD card in the main unit and the cigarette lighter plug powers on when the ignition is turned on, everything will power on and the built-in DVR will start recording all by itself. It will record both the front camera and the rear camera onto the micro SD card. So to correctly use one of these mirror dash cameras, is to set it up while it is turned off. So you can use it as a normal rear view mirror. Now the quality of the mirror itself is not as good as the factory mirror since it is a 
dual functioning display screen and a mirror as well, but it does the job fairly well. Now your normal mirror has a dimmer switch to allow for two positions. It reduces the brightness of headlights behind you while it still allows you to see what is behind you. Now use this to your advantage since the display screen, even at its brightest setting, is hard to see especially during the day. If you can still see normal rear view mirror reflection at the same time. So by switching to the dim mode, the mirror reflection will be gone and the display screen will be at its full potential. Now it is less noticeable at night in the normal mirror position since the display screen is brighter due to the darkness, but you can still see car lights superimposed on the screen. So flip it to the dim mode if you want to use the display screen only and Flip it to the normal mirror mode if you want to use it as a mirror. Now you can set the display screen to always on and to sleep in 30 seconds, 60 seconds, and 120 seconds. You can wake up the screen by a touch on the touch screen display when it is in the sleep mode, but the DVR is still recording even though it is in the sleep mode. So set it up to the mirror mode and since the camera will tilt up or down whichever way you set it up, use the digital tilt arrows to tilt the angle that is perfect for you. Now this does not tilt the camera but gives you a section of the overall field of view that the camera captures. I have mine in the mirror mode when it is down and the up position for the display mode. Okay, so here is what it looks like from the driver's perspective at night. And here is what it looks like from the driver's perspective during the day. And here is a recording of the front view camera at night at a traffic light. And here is the rear view camera video of the same drive. And here is the split screen video of that drive. Now here's a recording of the front view camera during the day at a traffic light. And here is the rear view camera video of the same drive. And here is a split screen video of that drive.
All right, so here we come to a stop and I take a screenshot of the video. And one of the things a lot of you are wondering is, can you read the license plate number of a car in front of you? Well, here we go. So let's zoom in and check it out here. Okay, looks like a five. The next is either a one or a letter J. So the bottom part of the license plate cover is sort of hiding. I believe that's a J. Next is 94313. So yeah, I think you can make out the license plate number of the car directly in front of you from the video capture. Now let's check out the car that's on the next lane which is a little bit further away. Now here you can sort of make out what it says but it is quite not clear enough. It could be Miss K-A-R, that's, that's what it looks like, but it could also be M-I-5-9 K-A-R or something like that. So it's quite not clear enough. So here's a car that's behind me that is fairly close behind. And even though the rear view camera gets recorded in the 720p resolution and we are not zoomed in, we can read the license plate. But once we start to move away, it becomes unreadable. Okay, so once powered on, and if your vehicle does not have an ignition connected power source and does not power on automatically, simply long press the power button for about a few seconds and let go. It should power on. So it will power on and it will begin to record automatically. Here you see the resolution you have set and the icons disappear so you have a limited amount of time. So just tap the screen, icons reappear. Here you have arrows to change the angle of the display. You can decrease the brightness, you can increase the brightness, you can turn the microphone on or off, you can stop the recording, and you can restart the recording. You can lock the video. Now, what this will do is it will not erase this particular video from the memory card when space runs out, when it overwrites the older recordings. So you can turn it on or off. Now to get into the settings, you will need to stop the recording. So you can go into the settings and here in the settings, you can change the resolution of the front camera. I have it set to 1296. Oops, got to do it quick. Here you can set it to 720p and you see the 720 up here here. You can change to the 480p and 480p appears here. I'm going to leave mine 1296. Next is the dual settings. In here, you can either close or open. When closed, only the front camera video is recorded. And when open, both front and rear camera videos are recorded into the micro SD card. Cycle is the duration of the recorded clips. Close is a continuous clip. We have one minute, three minute, and five minutes. Time lapse, one second, two second, three seconds, or off. You can turn the HDR on or off, and you can change the exposure. I like to have mine set to negative three because the white balance is set pretty high. So even if you put it at zero, you're going to get a lot of white balance or a lot of white in the sky. And if you set it all the way up to plus three, it is a little bit overblown. Now you can turn the motion on or off. I have mine's off. Now it detects motion, but you will need to uh, have the camera still or the unit still powered on but the recording turned off in order for it to detect motion and start recording if the whole unit is powered off like you turn off your ignition 
and get out, the whole power turns off. Well, it will not detect motion, even though it has a built-in battery. You can turn the watermark on and off. You can turn the microphone on or off. And you can turn on or off the license plate number on the screen. Here, you can type in the license plate number in another settings, and it will either appear or not appear. You can change from video mode to photo mode and vice versa. And you can hit the home icons for more settings. And here, just tap on the settings and it will give you the screen protection that we have gone through earlier. And we also have this LCD off protection. I'm not sure what this is because once I touch it, it turns white and I can't turn it back on or off whichever one it is now next we have the auto shutdown we have never we have one minute three minutes and five minutes we have the frequency settings we have either 50 hertz or 60 hertz refresh rates you can turn on or off the key sound choose your language set the date and time here you can punch in your license plate number, format the micro SD card, which you will have to do with a brand new micro SD card to make it work. Restore to default settings. And I believe this is to allow streaming of the rear camera. And check the latest software version. You can either go into the files folder from here or choose it from here. Here you can go ahead and play back pre-recorded videos. So here we have some videos. Press play. And you can also pause as well. Here you can lock the video so it doesn't get erased. You can throw it in the trash bin or you can go to the full camera view, which shows you the whole camera field of view on this rear view screen. So everything is kind of squeezed down, but the width is about the same. You can go to the actual aspect ratio view and you can go back to the display view. You can also return to the previous page from here. There you go. Now there's a folder one and folder two. The folder one contains all of the front camera recordings and you can use these arrows to go up and down. And folder number two contains all of the rear camera recordings. Hit the record icon to go back to the display view. Now in the display view, after these icons disappear, we have the time, day of the week, and the year and date. So here from the working display screen, tap anywhere on the screen to bring up the icons. Tap it again to show the front and the rear camera in a split screen view. From here, you can tap on the front camera section to show only the front camera on the display screen. First, bring up the icons. There you go. Tap it again to return to the split screen view. Now, tap on the rear camera section to show only the rear camera on the display screen. First, bring up the icons. There you go. You can also tap on the camera selector icon to change the camera views. And the camera selector icon is this little icon here. So tapping on it, split screen, front camera, and rear camera view. Now, if you want to manually put the screen to the sleep mode and use the display as a mirror, simply short press the power button. Now tap anywhere on the screen to wake up the screen. 
You can also short press the power button to wake up the screen as well. So the main rear view camera unit has a built-in battery. So if and when you do not have a camera available, you can actually use this to take photos and videos. Now, you may look a little awkward, probably worse than the guy with the iPad taking photos and videos, but at least you have precious events recorded. So that'll do it for this video review of the FXT's FX11GH, the rear view mirror dash camera with the wireless rear camera. So if you want to check it out for yourself, the purchase link is down below in the video description. With that, thank you so much for tuning in and watching once again. Have a great day and we'll see you again next time.